In the last 21 years, Judge Andrea Pennington has seen just about every type of crime. We see uh, car thefts, we see drugs, we see weapons, we see assaults on people. Pennington and this bench will soon be parting ways. She and one other judge here at Strickland Youth Center are being laid off. I think with the loss of two judges and the caseloads going up, it's not going to be a good thing for the community. In addition to two juvenile judges, a dozen other employees at Strickland are facing the same fate. Law clerks, court attendants, bailiffs, and court referees. Judge George Brown says he doesn't know how they'll manage to operate after the layoffs. It's one thing to figure out how to re deal with the loss of two judges bench time. It's a whole other matter to figure out how do we deal with the loss of 12 support staff. Five years ago, Strickland Youth Center had to add more beds in order to accommodate the increase in juvenile delinquents. Judge Brown says of the center's 120 beds, almost all of them are filled. So I've had to go through and try to let girls go for the last several weeks because we've had too many girls in the building. For now, Pritchard's Camp Martin will continue to operate, but those at Strickland say the loss of staff will have a significant impact on the duties they must perform. Some go to gamble, others go for the excitement. But for one woman who wants to remain anonymous, it was out of concern. I just heard from several people I know from this area that have grown up here. They just told me some of the things from, you know, people they knew that have worked there, the stuff that went on at the dog track about the lore, about dogs getting killed. <laughs> It just happened she was there one night when something bad did happen. She backed up into the war and was electrocuted for about 10 seconds. Then when they finally cut the power off, she fell back into the middle of the track. The lure came back around and tore her leg off. The dog was dead. Now the Greyhound Protection League wants the Mobile County Racing Commission to investigate. This is just a very rare and very unusual circumstance where the dog actually tried to run away from the lead outs and in essence caused further injury to himself. The Greyhound Protection League also wants the commission to find a safer way to race. The system that we have here is pretty commonplace and in use around the country. If there's a way to do it better, we certainly would be willing to look at it and, and see if it's right for the track here in Mobile. But this woman would like to see an end to Greyhound racing altogether. It needs to stop because if there's Greyhound racing, then there's gonna be Greyhounds abused because not everybody knows what goes on when the crowd isn't watching. Remember the days when playing Halloween dress up was just for kids? Not anymore. Now the kid at heart is coming out to play too. Cut loose your inhibitions and some people don't even know who you are. Some may be looking for a little mystery. For others, Halloween is like being a kid all over again. Because adults relate back to their childhood and I think we want to have fun too. And it's never too late to find that perfect costume. So how long has it been since you've dressed up? I never have. Even when you were a kid, you didn't dress up? No, I did. So this will be the first year you've ever? First time. And for those in the Halloween business. <laughs> they say sales are so good, it's frightening. The children's sales have been nothing compared to the adult costume sales force. Yeah, I think the adults have kind of, you know, finally taken over the, uh, the holiday of uh, Halloween. And, uh, and I think, like I said, it has a lot to do with safety reasons. Uh, the children are obviously getting costumes, but they're keeping it more at home and having more parties. So you may be wondering, what do costumes go for these days? Well, if you're looking for something really creative, you can go as this guy if you're willing to pay a couple grand. Okay, so maybe you don't have that kind of cash to spend. You can always throw in a mask and go as a werewolf for about 40 bucks. So do the little trick-or-treaters think the big kids are having too much fun? You think since they're grown-ups, they should still dress up? Yeah, because it's Halloween. <laughs> the music from this marching band... And this one changes the usually quiet Sunday afternoon on Dauphin Street to a noisy one. 
It may be a weekend, but 14 high school bands, dozens of students, teachers and parents are marching for education. And that it's very important to me uh, to give up my Sunday afternoon to be out here with all these wonderful people. <laughs> Education in Mobile County has seen its share of ups and downs. This march is to help support those who strive to make positive changes for Mobile's public schools. We just want to thank all the voters who came out, you know, and passed the tax so that we can have, you know, um, all the things that we need in our classroom and uh, to make education the best it can be in Mobile County. Yolanda Adams is the mother of a Mobile County high school student, but she says you don't have to be a parent to show your support. To get everybody pumped up, I've invited my friends, cousins, neighbors, everyone out here so that we can really get them involved. After walking down Dauphin Street, the parade's final step is bring them here to the Civic Center. Is everybody ready? Inside, a rally is being held. Education leaders highlight their strategies for reform in Mobile's classrooms. Much of the progress comes from the passing of the 2001 school tax referendum. Students like Katie Herrera say they hope that money will bring changes to their school. Lots of renovation in the buildings because we do have an old campus and books and things that classrooms need are very important. So. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Come on up. How are you doing? I got you something. Oh, you drew that for me? Well, thank you. Come on up here. Thank you. Oh, it's a picture of Rudolph. All right. She can say how old she is. Okay. Rico, are you two? Two? No. No. <laughs> Okay. There you are. You are on the good list. All right. Ho, ho, ho. What do you want for Christmas? I want a necklace because I broke one at my house. Oh, you did? Okay. There you are. You are on the good list. Good. And then. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. <laughs> a unicorn. A unicorn? Okay, those are popular this year. And can you give a kiss on the cheek? Okay. Oh, yeah. Merry Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! It's the sound we're used to hearing during the holiday rush. But sometimes those sitting behind the wheel shouldn't always be. They become loud. They lose uh, control of their uh, motor skills. They're dropping stuff, they're tripping. Christy Dunn is a bartender on Dauphin Street. She knows during the holiday season, the chances for drinking and driving can go up. You have to know that when you're serving somebody that you're responsible if they walk out the door and you think that they're gonna get in the car and drive. Don Soto says finding a safe ride home from the bars can sometimes be difficult. The cab service here is horrible. If you call a cab, you're not going to get a cab for 45 minutes. And that's downtown where they are. State troopers say the weekend was a relatively safe one on the roads. They reported only one DUI arrest for Mobile and Baldwin counties. They also reported two fatalities and 163 speeding violations. Drunk driving could lead to accidents and to jail time, but those who choose to booze do have an alternative that will keep them from getting behind the wheel. Ricky Baller tows people who've had too much to drink. It's part of a free program only during the holidays. It's called Operation 40 Proof. People don't realize when they had a lot to drink, it's harder to comprehend stuff and everything. Bollard says he didn't receive one call over the weekend. He hopes it's because people are finding safe rides. Leanna Orsua, News 5.